G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today, it is Derby Week. So, to celebrate, we are gonna be taking a look at some of the greatest Western Derbies we've ever seen. This upcoming Derby this week in round 22 does kind of shape as one of the more interesting Derbies in some time, because for the first time in what feels like a long time, this matchup has the potential to really influence the top eight finish. And it's been a while since I think you could realistically say that. Over the last decade or so, it seems like the Eagles and Dockers have kind of gone in opposite sides. The Eagles have obviously won something like 12 derbies in a row now, and I think before that, Fremantle won like half a dozen of their own. As such, it hasn't been really a recipe for a really good derby, but nonetheless, we're going to take a look at some of the best games that have ever transpired between West Coast Eagles and Fremantle. It's still amazing to think there still hasn't been a derby final. We've come close a couple of times. In fact, both of the times Fremantle have lost a preliminary final in the past, it would have been to play West Coast in the grand final had they qualified. Given these two teams, are likely to finish 7th and 8th at best this year. It's unlikely we're going to see a Derby final this year unless both teams make it all the way to the grand final. But with these two teams separated by just 4 points on the ladder, it does shape as a pretty exciting clash. And to get in the spirit of it, we're going to take a look at some of the best derbies we've ever seen. The first derby we're going to take a look at was back in round 6 of the 2006 season. In terms of the actual quality of the contest, this might go down as close to the single best Western Derby in terms of how good these teams were. The Eagles would have course go on to win the flag in 06 and Fremantle would make it as far as a preliminary final. For a little bit of added context as well, this took place six days after Fremantle were embroiled in that Siren Gate saga against St Kilda for which they were eventually awarded the four points after the fact. It was a fiercely close encounter from start to finish with Fremantle leading at every change by less than a goal. Unfortunately it would come at the cost of Aaron Sandlands who would break his jaw in a collision with Ruckman Mark Seavey so the Dockers had to do it the hard way without their star Ruckman against Dean Cox and a star-studded Eagles midfield. The Eagles trailed all day, but with three minutes remaining, Brent Staker took a crucial mark and kicked a goal to put the Eagles in front. But typically, Fremantle would have their response with Peter Bell finding Paul Hazelbley alone inside the forward 50 with an absolute laser kick. He would kick truly at goal, ensuring the Dockers would hold on to a heroic five-point victory over the Eagles. The second Western Derby we're going to take a look at was back in round 18 of the 2011 season. Now, in contrast to the first Derby we talked about, this game probably wasn't the most exciting game, but will be largely remembered for its exciting finish. Having won the wooden spoon the previous year, the Eagles were enjoying a massive resurgence in 2011 to be currently sitting in fifth spot, and the Dockers were sitting just one win behind them. Now, as I said, it was definitely a dour and scrappy affair, a bit of a finals-like intensity, but there was no doubt it was a fiercely close contest all game. The margins at each change were three points, one point and then seven points at three quarter time. Four goals on either side of three quarter time allowed the Eagles to build what appeared to be an unassailable 22 point lead halfway through the last quarter. Given the low scoring nature of this game, four goals in a short period of time seemed like too much for Fremantle. But as they so often do in derbies, Fremantle came hard late, kicking three goals to set up a thrilling finale. In the dying seconds, Matthew Rosa was penalized for a deliberate out of bounds call, allowing Hayden Ballantyne to have a set shot after the siren from more than 50 meters out against the boundary. With nothing short of a goal being required for victory, Ballantyne's kick sailed long and high and appeared to be going for goal for most of the journey. Ballantyne and the Fremantle crowd began to celebrate, unaware that the ball had actually fallen short and collided with the post. The Eagles held on for a dramatic one point victory and that win would propel them into the top four where they remained for the rest of the season. Dean Cox would be awarded the Ross Glendening medal for a 42 hit out and 22 possession performance. The next derby we're going to highlight light is back in round 21 of the 2000 season. Now this was the Demolition Derby, the most infamous of derbies despite the fact that these teams were ranked 12th and 13th on the ladder that season. Now the previous year the Dockers had claimed their first ever derby win before the Eagles would claim the first derby of the 2000 season by a record 117 points. Supposedly the Fremantle senior players felt that they were disrespected by the Eagles in the first derby and that tension in this game spilled over into violence. The most notable suspension of this game would be to Dale Kickett, who was handed a nine-game suspension for three different charges. The Eagles would dominate the first half of footy, opening up a 32-point lead at halftime, but the furious Dockers just wouldn't die. Clive Waterhouse would produce a mammoth seven-goal and 17-possession performance as the Dockers recorded a huge comeback and won the game by one point. Now, this game would be remembered as one of the nastier Western Derby moments, but it certainly signaled the moment that Fremantle had finally earned respect of the West Coast Eagles. The next Derby we're going to highlight is the Round 22 clash back in 2003. 
Now this particular derby would shape as the most meaningful Western Derby to this point, with both teams set to play finals for the first time, and a home final in Perth was also on the line. The Dockers had qualified for their first ever finals campaign, while the Eagles were looking to improve on their previous season's finish of 8th spot. It was an incredibly tight first half, with the scores all even at quarter time, before the Eagles edged a 4 point lead at half time. Paul Hazelby would lead the way for the Dockers as a 6 goal to 3 third term would open up a 19 point Fremantle lead at the final chance. The Eagles fought hard to stay in the contest in that final term, but Paul Medhurst was sublime with three goals, including kicking the sealer. That derby would earn the Dockers bragging rights that would finish higher than the Eagles for the first time, setting up a home final the following week against Essendon. Unfortunately, both teams were battered in week one of the finals, but there's no doubt this will go down as one of the best ever Western derbies. The fifth derby that we're going to highlight today is in round three of the 2005 season. Now, it was too early into the season to really read form lines, but but 2005 would prove to be the year the Eagles would announce themselves as a premiership threat under John Worsfold. The Eagles had finished seventh the previous season, while Fremantle would narrowly miss out on their second finals campaign, finishing ninth. Having won two of the previous three derbies, however, Fremantle would definitely consider a big chance for an upset here. After an even first term, the Dockers would break out to a 20-point lead at half time. The inaccurate Eagles would hit back in the third term, however, to cut the deficit to just five points at the final change. A final quarter blitz would see the Eagles stretch out a 27 point lead with just nine minutes remaining and the game appeared all but over. But the Dockers weren't done with quite yet, kicking three quick goals and when Jeff Farmer kicked a fantastic goal with just two minutes remaining, the margin was back at just eight points. It would be a frenetic final minute with the Dockers surging the ball deep into their forward 50, but the Eagles would hold on to record an epic eight point victory. Chris Judd would be awarded the first of what would become three Ross Glendening medals, while Luke McFarlane would win Mark of the Year for his incredible screamer in this game. The Eagles would of course proceed to make the 2005 Grand Final that year, while Fremantle would miss out on finals once again by an agonising two premiership points. The final Western Derby on this list is the Round 6 clash back in the 2018 season. Now this game would be historic for its own right, it would be the first Western Derby played at the brand new Optus Stadium, and it was played in front of over 56,000 people. But on top of that, there was no doubt it was an absolutely cracking game of football. For context, Fremantle were sitting 11th on the ladder going into this game, while the Eagles had surprised plenty with their form so far this year, currently sitting in second spot. It would be Fremantle who would get off to a commanding start, booting four goals to one in the opening term. But the Eagles would respond with their own second term of five goals to one to snatch an eight point lead at half time. Despite most of the second half going goal for goal, the Eagles managed to open up a lead of 19 points with just five minutes remaining and looked all but assured of victory. But as is a recurring theme in this particular video, Fremantle would hit back with two goals of their own to make it a thrilling finish. The siren would blow on Adam Chera as he shot for goal and the Eagles would hold on to an eight point victory. The Eagles would go on to win the Premiership in 2018 while the rebuilding Dockers would finish 14th on the ladder. This game would also provide a historic moment for the Eagles. When Josh Kennedy kicked his first goal of the game, he surpassed Peter Sumic as the greatest West Coast Eagles goal kicker. But there you go guys, that's it. That is the list of six of the best Western Derbies we've ever seen. Now to be honest, I only started watching football in about 2002, so anything past that, it's really hard for me to make a call on. So if you're watching this and you think I've missed a really obvious Western Derby, let me know in the comments. Also, while you're at it, guys, it's a big Western Derby coming up this weekend. Let me know in the comments who you think is going to win this round 22 clash. If you tell me you're tipping Fremantle and West Coast is shit, you will not be forgiven. In all seriousness, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.